Okay, so I'm going to talk about insulin deficiency. Insulin deficiency is where our pancreas releases insulin and it makes our cells permeable in our muscles and it pushes glycogen and other nutrients into the muscles. Okay, it's for muscle building, uh, for energy replenishment. Uh, yeah, so what happens is people eat too much of our carbohydrates, so the body gets Dicky with carbohydrates, it keeps releasing too much insulin, eventually gets bored and doesn't hardly release any. And this is the same with people that eat too much of our sugars. They get too many insulin spikes and dips, spikes, dip, spike, dip, eventually it gets bored, can't deal with it, so it shuts down. So the cell stays shut. So when you put a carbohydrate in your mouth for energy, okay, the body doesn't know how to do with it, so what's it gonna do? pushes it into fat stores. The best way around insulin deficiency is good nutrition. There'd be a list of things you can eat, that are things like cod liver oil, fengrip, uh, uh, cinnamon, okay? All these things are good, vitamin C also, okay? All these things are really, really good for uh, insulin deficiency. But we, as a whole, can get around it through neglecting certain things in our diet at certain times. Okay, to make our insulin deficiency more responsive. So one of the ways we do it is knocking carbohydrates on the head in the breakfast and definitely at dinner and before bed and going more to fibrous carbohydrates throughout the day. So fibrous carbohydrates are your vitamins and minerals in terms of vegetables. Or we neglect carbohydrates almost completely. Not completely completely, but almost completely. So the mark will only be a little bit coming from maybe like uh, your, your, your salads. And, and things like really light carbohydrate. So the body still keeps in touch with a little bit, but it's not being blitz of it. Now how long you stay on this particular diet is, how long is a bit of string, everyone is different. Some people can come out of it after a couple of weeks, some people depend how bad they are, it might take months up to a year, okay? It really can. But you can always tell when it's kind of working by actually your belly fat reduces nicely here, Okay, and it's the same when you're starting to get insulin deficient. I can get insulin deficient. Okay, so if I'm bulking, putting on size for muscle mass, I'll be eating a lot of carbohydrate. So then what happens is my testosterone levels drop because I'm putting so much fuel in, my body's own test doesn't need to be holding the muscle mass I've, I've retained. So it turns to fuel more to maintain my muscle mass. But then what happens is, I mean, same way it's in the way of carbs, my insulin keeps pushing out, pushing out, it gets bored. So I watch out for a little bit of belly fat here, start to creep in. When it starts to get too much, I drop my carbohydrates back. For me, it takes about two to three weeks to flip it back around and then I'll go again. Okay, so I stay in a lean bulk, it's called. Okay, that's the way, that's way I do things. Don't worry about bulking if you're losing weight and stuff. I'm just talking about me at the moment in terms of what I do, okay? But otherwise, it's quite easy to find out whether you've come out the other end of it. It's as simple as this you start to creep in some sugary carbs into your, into your post-workout, okay? So that's after a workout, and also around the day. Now, if you feel like that, you're not getting an insulin spike, like a nice happy feeling and drop, you're still a little bit insulin deficient, so you back that back off. Okay, if you feel like you're getting that good old spike, so the energy rush and then energy drop, your insulin sensitivity start to come back a little bit. That's a good way of testing it. Okay, but otherwise, that said, insulin deficiency and insulin itself is very important to the body. And if you're not releasing it or releasing too much, okay, they're both equally as bad as each other. So we need to be on a nice equal, equal tilt and such. Okay, so the best way that is obviously complex carbs gives us a nice slow release of insulin. Okay, but otherwise if we're deficient, we need to be knocking carbohydrates on the head. That said, it's pretty much the only time I really won't ask you to eat too much in the way of carbohydrates. It's all in moderation and what works for you and what carbohydrates work for you. So when we actually, when you start doing your diet plans, okay, you'll start understanding you'll eat a mixture of carbohydrates and one of them will be bread. And you'll see how your body responds to them carbohydrates and which ones work best for you. So I can't eat sweet potato, it gives me water retention. I can't eat it, but it just gives me water retention. So I generally don't eat it. I, my, my diet and carbohydrate intake is predominantly based around oats. Okay? I just like oats as well, I like them. Okay? I don't really, I don't touch bread, that also gives me water retention. 
But some of my clients can eat bread, and it doesn't give them water retention, and it doesn't make them feel lethargic. Okay, bread as a whole needs to be in a whole meal bread anyway, okay? So, yeah, that said, insulin deficiency uh, we need to look out for, but otherwise, if you're not too sure, and this is a little bit what you're talking about, okay, just contact me and I'll clear it up, and uh, yeah, that's it, but don't panic too much about it, okay? It's something that you probably aren't even, you probably haven't even got, okay? But otherwise, if, you, if we're not getting your goal and you're, we're doing everything possible, okay, and you're still not quite losing the weight, okay, although if you're muscle building and losing weight at the same time, your, your weight's going to pretty much stay the same. It's all about seeing the clothes, okay, and the tape measure rather than on the scales. But otherwise, yeah, uh, just contact me, ask me any questions you want, and I'll clear them up. Okay, thanks a lot. See you in the next one. Bye.